Well, thank you very much for letting us share with you tonight. And um, I'll start by introducing myself. I'm a grateful believer and follower of Jesus Christ. And I celebrate recovery and freedom from uh, past sin in my life. And um, I'm, a, I'm a major renovation project for the Lord still. And um, the one thing he's working on in me right now is pride in my relationships. So my name is Doug. Hi, guys. And hi, everyone. I'm a grateful believer and follower of Jesus. And um, I'm so grateful to be back here at CR with all of you to share a little bit of our trip to Guyana. And my name is Sharon. <laughs> and I just wanted to say that, uh, too, before we start, that um, just thank you for the worship tonight. That was really great. And uh, and we didn't tell Douglas one other thing. We didn't tell Douglas or share anything with, with him ahead of time of what we were going to talk about. But that song he picked tonight by... Um, uh, king and Country called Control. Like we could have just left it at the song and that's it. That's basically what we're going to talk about. Yeah, exactly. That pretty much sums up the whole trip. So, so we went to, so we went to Guyana. Where is Guyana? It's in South America. So Guyana is in South America and uh, just a couple uh, facts about Guyana before we get into the trip. So it borders uh, on Suriname, Venezuela and Brazil. It's about the size of southern Ontario, just so you get an idea of how big it is. And uh, it's known as the land of many waters. The people there are uh, Christian, Hindu, and Muslim. And about 90% of the population lives along the coast. So the rest of the place is wilderness. It's like jungle. Um, and our home there for two weeks was the Herstelling Assemblies of God. Oh, I left out that part too. It's six feet below sea level. So all along the coast, there's a huge seawall to keep the water out when the tide is high. So our home for two weeks was the Herstelling Assemblies of God. That's a picture of the church there you see. Um, Herstelling is just a small suburb like of Georgetown. And um, the church, the main floor of the church is a sanctuary. They have a trade school. Um, that's the second floor. So they have classrooms to, uh, to teach trades, I think mainly to women. And um, the third floor was the uh, accommodations. That's where we stayed. So we were very blessed to be part of an amazing team, as you heard, led by Amara and Natty, his wife. Uh, the other team members were Grace and Reg Kenny, uh, Maggie Rout, Nancy, Alicia, uh, Lauren Patzer, and my wife and I. And you can see up in the picture there, we didn't take things too seriously. Yes, we definitely didn't take things ourselves too seriously. If I could describe um, the team in one word, it would be unity. Uh, we had a lot of fun together. We laughed a lot. We worked well together. We prayed. We cried. Well, I cried, um, and we experienced an amazing trip together. And as you can see in that photo, uh, the Patsers uh, were their their soccer club was uh, donated a lot of soccer equipment for um, for the people, so that was very generous. Um, and we had um, there were a lot of highs and a lot of lows over the trip, but through it all, God held us together. Um, he knit us together, and had, we had a close bond through it all. Um, oh, oh, sorry. So the reason why we went basically was twofold. Overall, we were there to share the gospel with the people of Guyana. And um, as Jonathan said, Amara and Natty are planning uh, longer-term missions work in Guyana with young people and youth. So this trip was to begin some of those relationships and uh, with local churches and communities. So we had a busy two weeks planned. Uh, during the first week, we had uh, we ran a, a led a VBS at um, the Herstelling Assemblies of God Church where we were staying. Um, we had the evening crusades at the church from Tuesday to Friday, the first week, where we invited people from the community to attend. We started. We went to a local Amerindian village. Uh, that's the Aboriginal people in Guyana. To, to hold a, a VBS, and we started our, our outreach and outdoor crusades. So the second week, we, uh, we continued our community outreach and outdoor crusades. We, uh, we had meetings with government officials to further the, uh, the agenda that Amar and Natty have. Uh, we went to Kairuni Village, Canal, and Swan Village to hold VBS. Th those are an, uh, also Amerindian villages. And... Um, yes, Canal is actually a local home where we ran a VBS for 30 kids. What were our expectations? 
Um, before going on the trip, I, I had gone on a missions trip uh, back in 2019. I went to Siberia, and I I really enjoyed that trip. It was very it was very rewarding. That word is almost too light, but it was very rewarding spiritually and um, and friendship wise. And so this was an opportunity again. I saw and I and I also uh, deepened my relationship with God. So this was another opportunity to do that, I saw. And so I wanted to make myself available to serve God and to serve others. Um, I work in construction, so I'm pretty comfortable using uh, that, those kinds of skills and talents that go with construction, but that's not at all what we had planned for this trip. This trip was all ministry. It was, there was outreach through the evangelism and BBS. So um, like talking to people like this, like standing in front, and that uh, brings a lot of anxiety for me. Um, so I knew that God would be stretching me, um, but I wanted to um, be useful to him uh, to help extend his kingdom. So what were your expectations? Well, mine, my, mine were pretty simple. I went in with an open mind. I, I was thinking that, <laughs> that lives would be changed. I, I, you know, that I wanted lives to be changed. I just didn't know it would be mine. Um, I also didn't know going in what I would exactly contribute. I've never done a VBS before or ministry work or, or anything, but like I said, I was going in with an open mind, and uh, I just wanted to turn people to God. So that's what I was hoping for. Um, but what did God have in mind for us was, well, that was a little different, and which is usually the case. So from the start, the team experiences uh, some challenges that revealed to us that God was present in control right from the start. Nothing was a surprise for him. Our very first day, we became aware that we were not working alongside the local church, helping them with their VBS, but we were to lead the VBS for the week, and that's not what we expected. We weren't prepared for this. We had minutes to come up with something, and all of us turning to Reg, it was stressful, and we scrambled that first morning. And you can see in the previous picture, those were the kids we had to lead a VBS for, so there was probably... Like 150 150 kids. 150 kids and we had no program and we just uh, yeah we we had to rely on God in that moment um, so later on with a quick trip to the store a team meeting we came up with a plan some songs games crafts organization all the things we needed to to lead the VBS for the week and although it seemed really stressful at the time God was showing us from the very start that we were to rely on him yeah that that whole first day so on that, that same night, the first night after we'd all gone to bed, uh, there was a medical emergency requiring a trip to the hospital. Um, but God saw the team through this stressful situation. Uh, it wasn't a surprise to him. He knew it was coming. Um, he'd even um, gone ahead of us and made a way. Like uh, the pastors, the host pastors, um, him and his wife were both medical doctors. And... Um, through different circumstances that night, he showed that he was making a way. He showed his love and care over the team in a very real way that night, and he reminded each of us that he's sovereign and control over all things, everything. Even when things are seem out of control and in chaos, he's in control, and he's providing for our needs. Uh, so even though it was awful at the time, God allowed that, that to happen to the team and, and uh, to reveal himself to us in a way that we wouldn't otherwise have known. So just based on these two challenges, our very, that was our very first day, that was day one. God showed us in a very tangible way that he was in control through these trials, which was putting it lightly for us in the moment. God showed us his presence, his provision and care and knit the team closer together. We worked so well together. Each one standing up to do something to help and encourage one another. And most importantly, pray. We prayed a lot. In his unending grace, he placed peace and calmness over us all, even though probably it didn't feel like it at the time. But yeah. it, yeah. For sure. He was there. So the next day, um, the entire team was back together again. Um, and that evening, we went to the, to the crusade again. We went to the crusades uh, Tuesday through Friday. So that was uh, down on the first floor of the church. Um, so each evening of the crusade, there was an opportunity uh, for people, not for people, but for us and the team to share a testimony of how God was working or has worked in our lives. And so I shared my testimony that evening. 
I talked openly and honestly about who I was before I surrendered my life to Christ. My struggles with various sins, how I'd heard about Jesus Christ when I was a kid, but how I ignored him until I was in my early 20s. Um, and then he convicted me to surrender to him, that I needed him. And, how, and then I shared about how he'd worked on my life since then and how he continues to do so. And I was, I was anxious to do that. Like speaking in front of people um, brings me anxiety or nervousness anyway. But I believe that God wanted me to share my testimony while we were there in Guyana. And I had it prepared before we left home. Um, in fact, scripture tells us in 1 Peter 3.15, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have, but do this with gentleness and respect. So God, God's word tells us all to be prepared, not just me. It tells us all to be prepared to give evidence or defense for the hope that followers of Jesus Christ have. The hope that we will be with Christ in heaven one day, worshiping him. That God who began a good work in you and I will bring it to completion at the day of Christ. That's from Philippians 1.6. During my walk with Jesus, he has taught me that I am no longer defined by the shameful, wicked things that I've done in my past. My past is not my identity. So I share those things now to show the incredible mercy and grace of Jesus Christ because he's purchased me. He's bought my life and set me free from the bondage to sin in my life. The next evening, it was my turn to give the message at the crusade. Um, before we left the trip, I knew that uh, several of us would be asked to speak. Um, so I, I prepared. I prepared. Uh, I got ready. Um, I knew God was big enough to make up for my shortcomings. Um, and uh, I, knew, I wasn't nervous at the time, like before the trip. Um, but I got nervous as we got closer. Many people fear public speaking, and I do too. Um, but God provided a supernatural confidence and assurance and that he was in control and be looking after things. And uh, what I shared was based on Joshua 24, 15, which the verse is, and if, it is, and if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, this is, so this is Joshua speaking to the Israelites, um, and he's been a great military leader, just to give a little background, but he's old, and so he's trying to encourage them, and he's going to ask them to make a choice. If it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve whether the gods your father served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So he asked them to make a choice right there. We all must make that choice. Will I surrender to Jesus Christ or will I allow something or someone else to be my God? What about you here tonight? Have you surrendered to Jesus Christ or are you holding back something? Um, something that you're holding on to, something that you don't want to give up. I would encourage you to surrender that to him right here, right now. We can trust him with everything. And speaking of trust and choice, I had a few choices to make on the trip. Um, and I didn't trust God. I, Even though he was show showing us early on that he was in control, he was providing, and he was meeting all of our needs, there were a few times where I didn't trust him, and he exposed that to me immediately. There was uh, one day we were on a bus trip to Georgetown, which was 15 minutes away from where we were staying, but it actually took an hour to get there because there's so much traffic. Um, I was sitting next to a man named Sire on the bus who was telling me about the sites as we were driving. During our conversation, he told me he was a Muslim, and I thought, okay, dude, we need to talk. I wanted to, to talk to him about Jesus and what he'd done in our lives. Um, but I'd had a conversation with a Muslim before, so and I didn't want to make the same mistakes because I wasn't prepared in that conversation. So I started by asking him questions to find out where he was at in his faith, and I thought I could take it from there. But I found it difficult to understand him because of his accent. The windows in the bus were open, and he was looking out the window while we were talking. Um, it was noisy, and I just, I found it really difficult to continue the conversation, so I just let it lapse. And I later, I asked God to give me another opportunity to talk to Sire, and he did the very next day. But when I saw that bus and I saw Sire, I chickened out and went and sat in the back of the bus. So 
I was really angry with myself for not trusting God. It was so obvious to me that he put that situation right in front of me, and I failed. And in fact, I failed a few more times, but God wasn't done with me on that trip. In fact, God wasn't done with any of us yet. Um, over the second week, um, and we're condensing, there's a lot of details we're not sharing because we would be here probably all night. So we're condensing some things. Over the second week, we went to three Amerindian villages, as Sharon shared earlier, um, to share the gospel with the kids uh, through a VBS and also to encourage the youth. So uh, we went to Santa Mission, which was only accessible by boat. That's the one up on the screen there. Uh, that's the church. The red building is the church outside, and the other one is the church inside with Reg speaking there. Um, that was a 45-minute boat ride up this little tiny river, which is really cool experience. And um, so that was accessible only by boat. That's right. And then we went to Kairuni and um, Swan Villages, which were both remote, but you could get there by a squeaky minibus. Um, I say that because our bus was squeaky everywhere we went. Um, well, there's much, or, much I enjoyed about all three of these villages. One stands out, um, and that would be Santa Mission, this one here. That, was, uh, that one was really a treat, I would say. So, and, and I'm going to change. I wanted to say some different things, but the, the ride there was, uh, it was like a retreat almost for us. It was like dr we were going uh, in the speedboat up a river, a really windy river. It almost looked like what I imagine the Amazon River looked like with all these trees everywhere. And um, like we were way out, felt like way out in the middle of nowhere. And then um, we got to the place and it looks beautiful, as you can see in the other picture there with lots of sand everywhere. And uh, we had a great time with the with the kids there, and um, and some of us went outside. That right there, we're outside sharing with some of the young people and adults. Um, and it was a very it was a very rewarding time. And then and then we shared a meal with them as well. They had cooked a meal for us, and we went and all sat together. And then after that, we got to swim with the uh, with the piranhas. You could <laughs> you could flip it. Oh, here I'll do it. And the black water there, you can't. It's so black that if you put your arm. Like if I was standing in the water up to my waist and I put my hand in like a foot below, you wouldn't be able to see your hand at all. So, but it was really refreshing. We had a lot of fun there, um, like in going for the swim and so on. And we made sure that we always put a mark. We were between Amar and the shore. So we just had to swim faster than him to get away from the piranhas. There was a couple other things that stood out for me um, about that trip. And uh, there was a, there was this kind of realized all this after. There was a group of people that came there also on a boat. We didn't really notice. I didn't notice till after anyway. And um, they had come from another church. But what, we real, what I realized is when we left, so it's an hour boat ride from there back to where we can get into our van. And when we went back there, those people are standing on the dock. So they had done the same boat ride as us there and back. But then they had another hour boat ride to go home. And they were all, they were all uh, like dressed very nice, like we would dress on a Sunday morning. Yeah, and so I was, it, this didn't kind of hit me till after when we got home and I started thinking about how committed these people must be to, to go for two hours, to travel for two hours, to come and see some people from Canada they don't know and to hear what God has to say. And um, I was just really struck by their commitment to do that, their commitment to God. Um, and the other thing that struck me is when God gives us, he gave us opportunities to speak during that church service. Was I ready to do that? Like that's a lot, there's a lot of, um, I don't want to say pressure, but not pressure is the wrong word. Um, responsibility, I think. If God gives me an opportunity to speak, was I ready to do that? Like people who had um, traveled so far to hear from God and hear from us, like I don't know, I'm nothing special. I'm Anyway, I just, I was humbled by that and I thought I should take very seriously the opportunities God gives me and be ready for them and know his word. Um, and, I, and I was just not really, I was thinking about my own commitment after thinking about how, how far these people had traveled. You can tell them about Yara Cabra. Yeah, I'm just going to flip through some. Uh, so these are all pictures here of, of some of the VBS. Um, this is at Kairuni. Our second, that second, that was our second um, BBS at uh, Kairuni Village. 
with uh, Lauren giving out her soccer equipment. And this is Swan Village, yeah. the last CBS that we did. That's inside the church at Swan Village. So this is the Sunday evening, uh, the first Sunday that we were there. Reg, uh, this is when we started our evening crusades, our community outreach. And Alicia, Reg, and I, along with Grace and our host church friends, went up to this distant community called Yaracabra to hold an outdoor service crusade. And we are on the side of the road, even though it looks like a beach, we're actually by the side of the road. Uh, so we set up um, on the roadside outside of, outside of this bar turned church. Um, there I learned the owner of the bar closed it the day she had become a Christian and transformed it into a church. That's pretty cool. So that's it there. Where the pews are now um, used to be tables with where people used to drink and, and gather. And we took some of those pews out to the roadside and held our service. But um, yeah, keep in mind, this was her livelihood. And in that community, it was very remote. There was not a lot of opportunities there. And she gave it all up for God. Once a place where people would gather and drink, she changed it for people to gather and worship. And that really... The next day, like, did she do that? She became a Christian. The next day, she closed, she closed the bar. Closed it the day she became a Christian. Yeah. Um, so like any renovation project, transportation, transformation, transportation in Guyana does take a long time, but also transformation <laughs> <laughs> takes time. Some things are removed, some things are added, and that same building has a different purpose now. I really connected with this. It reminded me of my own walk with God. He, he, his work in me has done the same thing. He's renovated my life for a new purpose. He removed some things and added some better things. He made me a new creation and gave me a new purpose. Amen. Amen. Um, one day that second week, uh, we also had a meeting We also had a meeting with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Department of the Government of Guyana. And it's through this agency that Amara and Natty had seen God open many doors for them um, for this new ministry that God has planned for them. Uh, the ministry that Amara and Natty have is called Community of Hope. And as you heard, it'll focus on youth and extending the love of Jesus Christ to the youth um, through building relationships, but also practical things such as uh, providing skills training for jobs. So as Sharon already mentioned, this so this mission trip was to um, build relationships, uh, including with the people in the government and with the local churches as well. So we met with the government, and uh, we were the team was interviewed about the community of hope and its focus. Another day that week, um, we went to a VBS in Canal. Uh, we packed all our things up and we drove across the river, and. Um, went to this couple's house. Amara and Natty had met this couple. There it is there. Um, Amara and Natty had met this couple on a previous trip. I think he was uh, a taxi driver or he drove, drove them around. Um, so this, this couple was not, they were not Christian, um, but they wanted to do something for the kids in their neighborhood. Uh, they had about 30 kids to their place and we sat outside under, they have an, an awning there, um, like a roof to protect us from the heat of the sun. Um, and I really enjoyed this day. It was a smaller group of kids, but I got to sit and talk with them and interact with them. And we played games and we sung songs. Um, and uh, we taught them uh, Romans 6, the Bible verse, Romans 6, 23. The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. And now I have that memorized, that verse, thanks to Reg. It was a great morning. And it's amazing to me that these people were not followers of Jesus Christ, yet they opened their home to us so we could come there and share the gospel and share God's word with kids in their neighborhood. I thought that was, that was only God does things like that. Um, and they had also prepared a meal. They paid for the food out of their own pocket and, and gave a meal to each one of the kids for lunch. And then they cooked us this, um, I thought we had a picture of that. They cooked us, a, it's called a cookout. It's a giant, huge bowl, and they, there it is in the upper corner there, over an open fire outside, um, and it's rice and beans and chicken. It was very good. And we, yeah, she also made some homemade uh, chips, like breadfruit chips. Um, so it was, uh, it was an excellent morning. 
So throughout and throughout the week, beginning on Sunday evening, uh, Sharon already shared that we have the out we had the outdoor um, uh, outreach. Sorry, the outdoor crusades. That's what I was trying to say. And so we did that in two different communities. And we we did I shouldn't say we 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 were the church was doing that, and we we were coming alongside them. So a minibus would take a part load of the team and people from their church and go into these uh, two communities. Um, and it was it looks really bright there, but they didn't have any street lights. That's just because there was a one light on the van that they brought with the. So there was worship, a worship team with some instruments, a PA system, and a really bright light on the van. And then we'd go into the community. We went to uh, Sharon went to Yaracabra, and we went to Friendship, and we would sing worship songs just out on the on the street and um, worship songs. And there was some testimonies, people talking about how God had transformed their lives. Um, and and change them as they'd surrendered to him. And also there was, uh, they would give a gospel message. And we did this, um, right, like I said, right on the street. And there'd be neighbors around, but they would never come too close, so they didn't seem like they're too interested. Um, but they were listening. And uh, so each of us on the team had an opportunity to share there as well. So I shared my testimony again, um, and I talked about my thinking that drugs and alcohol and sex, the things this world offers, were the sure way to a full and happy life. And how I was wrong about that, that it's empty. And that Christ is the only thing that satisfies, that satisfies the longing in each one of us. And not only that, but he's made me new. He changed me. He transformed my desires, some immediately and some over time. But he's, tra- he's changed me. And he's never once failed me. He is so, he's been so faithful and steadfast in love. And I shared that um, with the people there. So that, that is our trip in a nutshell, but um, there's a lot more we can share. So after two very full, exhausting weeks, we were due to depart on Sunday evening. Uh, I think I can speak for the team when I say we were all out of gas and maybe running on fumes. I'm not sure if I had any fumes left in me when we attended our last Sunday morning church service. The church that we attended that morning was about 30 minutes away in Guyana time. <laughs> so we had another bouncy, bumpy, squeaky road trip, but this bus fortunately had a AC, which was not Thank you, Lord. the norm. Thank yeah. you, Lord. So that, that church service was a gift from God for us. In his goodness, he filled up our empty tanks, refocusing our eyes on Jesus Christ. And I remember when we sat down, um, when we sat down and they started to worship, I knew uh, that's the first thing that came to my, my mind. This service is a gift from God. He gave us a much needed lift, encouraging us to press on towards the goal. We were so encouraged by being reminded of the cost of discipleship, the commitment that it requires, and that Christ needs to be at the center of our lives. And um, the worship songs that we sing, I remember singing. Um, I won't sing it because I can't sing. Your presence is heaven to me. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Your presence is heaven to me. That song just really... Can you sing it for us? <laughs> that song just really, really struck home that morning. And um, the worship songs and the pastor's message, that was exactly what we needed. God knew that, and, and he provided exactly what we needed. And after the service, we ate lunch with the pastor and some of his family. And that meal... That last lunch was like, unlike anything uh, that we had over the last two weeks. It was all very familiar comfort food. It felt like it was a hug from God. And I, I just wanted to say that because he was looking after everything, all the details, all the big things and all the little things down to that last lunch. He knew exactly what we needed and he provided. And I ate way too much that day. So we just want to sort of summarize or how we thought we saw how we saw God working in our lives. We did. We did, okay. it wasn't all work. We had a lot of fun, but we did get to go um, up to uh, Kaichur Falls, which is one of the the world's largest waterfall by volume. Single drop falls. Single yeah. drop waterfall so, by volume. So it was a one hour flight on this thirteen seater plane with me at the helm, as you can see. Um, Sharon got to sit in the cockpit on the ride home, and it, it was it was a one day retreat retreat that we had, and it was it was um, it was a blessing for us as well. It was very very refreshing. So that's 
High Church Falls. If you're ever in Guyana, I encourage you to go see it. Um, so yeah, how did God work in my life? Well, quite a bit. I didn't know I needed so much work. I went into this trip thinking that God would change lives and hopefully use me somehow, but I didn't know he planned to work in me so aggressively. And Doug said I shouldn't use the word aggressive because it sounds too strong or too violent, but violent, yeah. In, in that moment, he wasn't giving me one inch of wiggle room. He wasn't giving me any space to try to do things on my own, in my own strength, or default to my comfort zone. He gave me no choice but to rely on him fully. I really felt that he was pressing on me. I, I, there was just no other choice but to rely on him. I, it was a very, very powerful, some, something like I've never experienced before. He was very present, pressing me to accept his sovereignty, to turn over all the stress and all the strain and all the feelings and all the fear that I had over that time to him and that he would provide, and he was providing. And by the end of the first week, I was feeling mentally and physically drained. And that was the first week, and we still had a full week to go, but, but he was so faithful and provided. And Psalm 46 was, was a, a verse that I was living in for those two weeks. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. And he was. He made his presence known, and he showed me that as I trust him, he will give me the strength and ability for the tasks that he's given me. He demonstrated his sovereignty over all things, leading our team along the way. And then there was that Sunday morning service. The title of the sermon was, The Quest for Paul's Heart, His Spiritual Journey. The text, Philippians 3, 12 to 14. I'll just read it for you. Not that I have already obtained this, or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I thought about Paul writing that that letter while he was in prison <laughs> um, and how much he suffered for the task that God set out for him. He endured so much suffering with a joyful heart as he pressed on towards the goal. And not that my difficulties <laughs> over those two weeks were anything like Paul's, but I was so encouraged to be reminded to press on as Paul did and not let the challenges and difficulties that are either created by God or allowed by God to slow me down. I have to widen my stride and press on. We are called to be servants and laborers of God, and it's a blessing, but there is a cost, there is a reason, and it requires commitment. But like Pastor Balaram said on our last day, don't let fear hold you back from the ministry that God has called you for. I made the choice to go on this trip with an open mind, hoping to serve God in some way, and he showed me his heart. He showed me who he was, and I got a front row seat to God's ministry. I got to share an amazing experience with a group of believers that supported each other and loved each other. We spent time with God together and built lifetime friendships, but most importantly, I got to know God more personally, and that is the prize. Mm -hmm. Amen. I went... I don't, like, like Sharon, I went to Guyana thinking God would work in the lives of the Guyanese people who didn't know him. And I didn't really give a whole lot of thought to him working in me, but that's what he did. The importance, what he impressed upon me um, through the trip is the importance of the body of Christ and how much we need to be together regularly. The laughs, encouragement, the prayer, the conversation, and just generally being together with the team 
it, it was just so, so good. Um, and I understand like a, a missions trip is a unique situation. All of us living together under one roof and having um, a daily common goal. But I really miss hanging out with, uh, with everyone and all the, all the laughs and, and silly things we did together and, and just sitting and eating and talking. Um, and I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to confuse it. It's not just about, it not, wasn't about me feeling good. We were praying for and supporting each other, helping one another, working alongside each other, spending time with God together. When someone else saw that uh, there was a need, that one of, one of the other team members needed something, they would help. And those kinds of things, or pray, um, that re- it just was really impressed upon me in that trip. How important, how much I need the body of Christ all the time, daily. And God also clearly demonstrated his sovereignty and presence to me um, on this trip. As as we talked about early on, the very first day he showed us that we need to rely on him and that that he's trustworthy, that I can rely on him. Um, It's interesting I say that, but even today at work, um, I was having some difficulty at work and uh, I was getting, I was getting upset and he brought these words back to me that I had written down to share with you tonight, that I can rely on him. I don't have to worry about what's going on. I can trust that he will lead me. If I lean on him and rely on him, he will lead each of my steps. It may not look the way that I think, like the situation, but he will lead me through One it. of the other team members shared something while we were there too. We were talking one day, um, Reg. He talked about how he should look for things that he can't do in his own strength and ability. And I think um, often, I think even of Sun, of yesterday morning, um, there was different ministries that were on and places to volunteer. And my mind immediately goes to the things where um, I have abilities or talents already, because uh, those are the places where I'm comfortable. But Reg shared, and I agree, I agree with what he said, that we should look for the things that are outside of our own strength or ability. Um, when it's not my own strength, then it's God's strength. It's not my ability or talent. It's God doing it. It's clearly him. And I've seen God work in me and others. Um, when, when, when I've stepped out of my comfort zone, God has demonstrated his faithfulness and strength. He shows his character. He sh- and he did that on the trip. Um, and not just in me, but I saw it in, uh, in other people too when they did that. He provided exactly what we needed because he is faithful and trustworthy. And so that's all we're sharing tonight. Thanks for listening and letting us share, guys.